Hi, hello, it's Amber. Welcome back. I thought we'd paint this uh, marsh, sunset over the marsh for our marsh week for our 100 day challenge. Now, before going into this, I didn't know that I was going to paint that. I showed you that after the fact that I'd painted it. So here we go. We're going to take our 100% cotton paper. We're going to tape it down top to bottom, side to side. I do it the same way every single time on top of my plexiglass. I love this plexiglass. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend you do. They do come in different thicknesses and I really do appreciate the thickness of this. I'd say it's probably like one eighth. It's really sturdy. It has nice rounded edges so it won't cut you on the sides. Some of them are made for frame for framings or frames in photos, so they'll be sharper edges. I'm spraying the paper with water. I'm going to use my flat brush and sweep that water so I get full coverage. Yes, my tape bleeds into my paper sometimes, and I actually don't mind that. I'm sure it really probably would offend some people, but it doesn't bother me at all. I get the most magical things happening sometimes, and sometimes it's something I can never recreate, and I just love it. So what we're doing, I am taking Masha's handmade paints today, and I'm using some reds, some oranges, and some yellows kind of a peachy color in there as well. And I'm just going to play with these sky colors. You can do whatever you like. You don't have to follow along with this particular one. You could use purples and pinks and blues. That would be fun. You could use more yellows and oranges with maybe hints of pink. <clears throat> really the possibilities are endless here. I did decide that I was gonna try to keep the center a little bit more yellow and then the peachy red at the top and the orange. So I used peach, dragon's blood, no, I did not use Dragon's Blood. Peach and Flame and some of her yellows, some of her single pigment ones. I mix some together. I mix a lot. <laughs> so you see me mixing off camera or you don't see me mixing off camera because I feel like it's kind of a personal thing and I want, to I want you to find your rhythm and what works for you rather than me telling you what I mixed so that you're not just going and trying to recreate exactly the same mix that I'm doing. I want you to explore and have fun in your mixing, right? And trying to um, push you a little bit more to explore different color combinations. And so that's pretty much why I don't show my mixing. I'm taking my mop, I am using mop here. It's my Shimoni mop and I am trying to get little clouds in here. I decided I don't really love that idea. So again, this is intuitive painting. So that means that you can just kind of go with the flow. If something works, then it works and you go with it. If it doesn't, you don't have to stay with it, right? You can switch it up. You can, like right now, if I wanted to get rid of those red lines, I could take my mop like this and just kind of sweep them away. I could also take a dry um, hockey brush and I could also sweep that very lightly over the top and it would kind of blend those colors back together. So there is a lot of forgiveness in watercolor. I feel like sometimes it gets a bad rap thinking people, people thinking maybe they can't change things or if they don't like something right away. They got to quit and go, you know, start over. I don't know what I'm, oh, I'm fiddling with a piece of fuzz right there. <laughs> I always have fuzz on my paper. I am taking some of Masha's brown. She has two different browns and I'm mixing those together with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of orange. And again, just really mixing those colors in, in having that harmony, right? The more you mix the colors you're using, together, whether it's two colors or seven colors, as long as you're mixing those colors together, you're going to have a harmony, right? If you start leaving them just plain by themselves, like the one brown, the one yellow, I feel like that's where it starts becoming less flowing and less harmoni harmonious, harmonious, <laughs> is that a word? <laughs> and then it starts to become choppier, right? If you're letting these play together and kind of blend, and bleed and you're mixing, then they, they, they work, they fit, right? They fit together, they're meant to be together because you've already kind of mixed them rather than just using each one individually. Anyway, I am just playing here. I'm not really sure exactly what I'm going for. I wasn't sure if I was going to let the horizon fade into kind of nothing, which I did kind of want that. I thought about putting a mountain range back there so you can absolutely put a very, very light hint of just some mountains back on the horizon. Now I'm going to work on these grasses and these little wispies, right? So I do work on this quite a bit. I contemplating actually speeding this up and not having you sit through here. But you know, after a bit of that, I thought, well, you know what, maybe real time is good time because then you get to see how long I really did spend on this. And if you think it's worth the time, definitely you know, you can, but there's also ways you don't have to do that, right? You could take a flat brush and you could sweep up. You could use, there are other brushes that you can make grasses with, right? You could use a fan brush. You don't have to do each single grass the way I did here. And you can see I got a clump there. 
and I'm going to, you know, try to break that apart later, but just, I'm trying to get that base, base down. And I'm also trying to get that very, very foreground a little bit darker. It, it takes me a while. You'll, you'll see what I resort to after a while, but it does take a while to get each individual, individual grass. And that has been kind of my preference, the way to do it. I'm sure there are other ways that you might like to do it. And it would take you 30 seconds versus, I think this takes me about five minutes. <laughs> So bear with me while I paint each grass. I am using my Shimoni Rigger, which is a very, very fine brush. You could also use uh, Da Vinci Colino, Col Colino, 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 if you have that one. Uh, Princeton liner, I'm trying to think of all the other liners I have, black, silver, black velvet silver liner, script liner. You could use any, any liner right here, whatever you're comfortable with, to be honest with you. So when I say a liner or a rigger and I specifically call out one, I, I never want you to feel like you need that one. I want you to use the rigger or the liner that you're comfortable with, right? Because for me, I can't make fine lines with any rigger or liner. It has to be this one or another one, right? I can't use all five of them. I've tried one last night um, and it just didn't work at all. <laughs> the hairs just wouldn't grab enough water for me. The, they wouldn't make a fine enough line. Like it just, it just wouldn't happen. And so if you need to just practice with all of your, pull out, well, I do this every once in a while, I pull all my riggers, all my liners, and I just practice making thin strokes and see what gives me the best result. And the one that I can get the most out of, right, without having to dip every five seconds, because you don't always want to have to do that. So on these grasses, I'm just playing with the little wispies on the top. I don't know if they're wheat grasses. I mean, wheat doesn't typically grow in a marsh or a swamp. So <laughs> we'll just go with some sort of, you know, swampy marsh, wetland type grasses. Um, I do have actually saltwater marsh near me. So there are a lot of grasses. I don't know what they are. I guess I should ask one of these times. Next time we have a guide um, taking us on a field trip or something, I'll make sure to ask. So this is where I decide, okay, let's just get this darker a little faster than I'm doing. So I had mixed up some brown, as you can see, kind of like a rich burnt sienna. And just trying to kind of trying to get some contrast going in that base and deepen it up so that, you know, our eye has a, a grounding point, the middle that we do want sort of fade out, and then the the horizon or the top, not the horizon, I'm sorry, the top, right? The sky that kind of pulls it back in and kind of pulls you down back to the skyline. So between those two, it's almost like a sandwich, right? A sunset sandwich. <laughs> so we're having a little marsh sun, sunset over, yeah, a marsh sandwich over the sunset, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. It kind of gives off dreamsicle colors, doesn't it? A little bit of dreamsicle colors. A really cool thing happened in the peach at the very top of my paper. You can't see it, but it it kind of separated a little funky. The paint did. And it looks actually kind of really cool. I, I don't know how to word it. It almost like the paper came through. I don't think I've really had that happen. I'll have to zoom in on it later or show show you or or take another peek at it later and see what what I did. I don't I don't know. This is Arsh paper, 100% cotton. I'm not sure if I dropped water in it, but it doesn't look like the normal kind of bleed with water. So not really sure. But I love those little like human errors or those little flaws or those whatever you want to call them, right? Whether they're flaws in your eyes or not. They're just those little imperfections that, I don't know, that make it like nothing else, right? With acrylic, I feel like well, they probably are. I'm sure there are imperfections in that in that way, in that sense. But I feel like watercolor imperfections and flaws just have this different kind of magical feel that they look almost like they're supposed to be that way. So again, I am just trying to, by the way, mix up these greens, these greens, these grasses, so that there's all different browns. And, you know, I didn't mix up that one that you see me dipping into and use it the whole time, right? I varied it. So I'm not a fan of pre-mixing all my colors, having them ready to go. I mix as I go. And if I run out, I don't, I don't care. I mix it up again. And I don't, it doesn't have to be perfect to me. I just keep mixing it as I need it. Changing those colors a little bit, you know, each time I mix it so that again, that we have this variation and this inconsistent, I don't want them all to be the same color. I did pick up my Shimoni mini quill brush. And I'm just trying to get some more brown in that base there. And just decided to go on in strong with it. <laughs> and then I'll go with my black velvet script liner and kind of loosen it up a little bit. And just by using a wet, you know, a damp brush, not soaking wet at all, because I don't want to introduce much more water, but just kind of breaking up the harsh lines and letting it turn into a background versus these weird lines that I shoved in there. So that's what you're seeing me do, just playing back and forth with trying to um, enhance this foreground without without doing it too quickly 
it, without and losing those small details, right? That wispiness. I felt like I think the reason why I went so slow with this and why I wanted to show you this is because I feel like the process of going this slow and doing them individually gives a more softer flowing moving feel. And I wasn't sure, to be honest, in the beginning, if it was going to work that way. But now, you know, doing this as a voiceover and looking at it back, I can see that I was on the right track. And I'm glad I was because I definitely was hesitant and second guessing myself and thinking, wow, this is not that great. It's not good enough to show people. But you know what? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of getting better about that. I feel that we're all at different stages. And, you know, there's artists that are so much better than me, but maybe they're not great at loose stuff. Maybe they'd like to loosen up a little bit. Maybe they just want to try something that they're not used to doing. Maybe they do very, very, very detailed florals or very, very detailed you know, urban scapes or something, and they just want something loose to play with. And this is definitely one of those loose, fun things to explore with color and explore your brushes as well. It's a great, great chance to uh, test out some liners and some riggers and maybe even a dagger, whatever has the best tip for you. If it's a round and it's a size two and that works for you, that's awesome. If, you know, maybe Shimoni also makes a triangle brush and it has an amazing tip. So, or maybe the um, reservoir brush, all these, all these different brushes they just need you to try them, right? We don't know what's going to work for us until we try it. Just because it's around 10 doesn't mean it won't make super fine grass lines, right? It's amazing sometimes. The biggest brushes, sometimes you can get these super amazing lines that you're like, wow, I am just don't know how they how they do it. And I've done it myself where I was like, wow, this brush has an amazing tip on it. I, I don't even understand myself. So anyway, I'm darkened up my brown, as you can see. I didn't use a sepia, but it does look like I did. Or even a Van Dyke brown. I didn't use those, but um, I just mixed a bunch of moshes together. And I it just kept adding darker, darker and less water to get, you know, more, more pigment down there. Just playing and keep going and keep going. And, you know, and when you want, you can stop. You don't have, you can add it to one side. You don't have to cover this whole area. You can now add a tree on top. It doesn't have to be a marsh. It could be a, just a field. You know, I only said marsh because it's marsh week <laughs> and that made sense to me. And it totally does look like a marsh in my mind now. But if I also said sunset over, uh, you know, a grass field, that would work for me as well. Wheat field, that would also work. So I think, you know, the power of our suggestion and the power of our words. And I don't mind that if you decide it's it's a wheat field, that's fine with me, right? I, I love that about watercolor. I don't, in art in general, I don't feel like we have to say what it is. And I feel like if it makes you feel something, that's awesome. And I don't really matter. It doesn't really matter what it makes. You know, I don't take offense to it is what I'm trying to say. And also, if you see something you don't like, I say this a lot, but if you see something I'm doing that you're like, mm, oh, I should do that. That doesn't look good or whatever. It's awesome because then you know for next time, don't do that, right? And I, I mean, I learned that from my own self all the time. Right? I was like, oh man, I didn't like that. Or, oh, I'll be more careful and not dry, drop paint on my picture next time and pretend that it's a faraway bird. <laughs> so it's just time for you to play and time for you to just kind of test everything out. Okay, so after I finish these grasses, I am going to add some splatter because I love splatter, but I didn't let my paper dry completely. So I like to cover up the area that I'm not wanting the splatter in. So in that case, this would be the sunset, right? Don't want it everywhere. Uh, you could add a sun in there if you wanted to with some, with some shimmer, easily paint in the sun there, but I'm taking my mini quill brush and I'm dropping in splatter. And if you don't have good luck with splatter, what I would highly suggest you do is paint a page of just scrap color and practice your splatter, right? Use all the brushes. Sometimes a size four will work the best. Sometimes a size eight. It depends also what size painting you're working on, what size you want the splatters, right? big, small, if you want really super fine ones, like night sky, just really thin, small ones, you'd want to use like maybe a toothbrush or something, right? To kind of use your thumb and scrape off little tiny little splatters. I don't do that as often. I do like to use brushes. It's just more convenient, less messy. I don't really like to touch my paint, to be honest with you, even though you will see me stick my finger in the paint every once in a while to smudge a, a dot or a splatter or something that's just too big. I do try to use my, my cloth towel. But anyway, just finishing up the splatter there taking off the paper, checking it out, make sure I got an even amount, and I'm going to dry that splatter. And of course, we have to add some birds. This is my bird brush as well, the same brush that I use for the grasses. This is the, again, Shimoni Rigger. 
and it's just so fine. I'm going to order the other one too. I think it's a size six or an eight. So I'm excited to get that one too. It'll be much bigger, but hoping it would also work for trees is my hope, but I'm not sure. All right. Best time paint pill time. I'm still using my cheap Jackson paper. I'm up, I apologize. It, it sometimes does leak, but I just want to get through the stuff. <laughs> I have so much of it. <laughs> Darn me for buying it. So don't buy this cheap tape. tape. Buy Holbein soft tape. It's the best tape and it's so, it's just so nice. It's reusable too. All right. So this is what we ended up with. I would love to see yours and hear about what you felt when you were painting it. If you felt wheat field, if you felt marshland, and if you actually had fun and I can't wait to see what colors you ended up trying to use too if you didn't go with this color theme theme or scheme or whatever you want to call it and I do love these Shimoni brushes there's a discount code it's amber 15 if you want to try these brushes they're awesome and I think that's about it thank you so much for joining and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I can't wait to see you again all right bye for now